A wealthy family is sleeping in their smart home at night when suddenly the house comes alive on its own. Mike? Oh. Mike? Huh? Wake up. I think there's someone in the house. Armed with a baseball bat, the head of the family walks through the rooms and notices that someone opened the tap in the bathroom. It seems there are no intruders in the house, and it's going crazy on its own. The homeowner loses it and tries desperately to restart the system. Finally, the house quiets down, and its residents hope that such horror won't happen again. The rich folks have no idea that this is just the beginning of their troubles, who set the smart house against them, a person or something supernatural. A few days prior, the owner of the smart home, aviation tycoon Mike Regan, secretly met with his assistant at a hotel. Mike wants to make planes as accessible for millionaires as taxes. His company is developing an app, but they still require approval from the Securities Commission, and Mike is having trouble with it, but the assistant assures him that the commission can be bribed. It's a done deal. You got the SEC in your pocket, Mike. Full of hope, Mike returns home. He has his wife, Rose, and 17-year-old daughter, Caitlin. The happy family lives in a luxurious smart house and never denies themselves nothing. Hey, can I get a new phone? Oh, sure. What color would you like? As Caitlin rushes off to school, she asked her father to call a technician to fix the Wi-Fi. It seems their smart home isn't as smart as they thought as it often glitches and breaks down. Would you like to live in a smart home? What do you think could be the downsides? Share your thoughts in the comments. Mike is upset that his grown-up daughter no longer listens to him, and then he hurries to go about his business. Today is an important day for him. He's presenting the app to investors. He starts talking passionately about planes and even cracks a joke. You're as free as you'll ever be, but it's expensive. Isn't that? Then he launches an impressive presentation on the projector, but at the crucial moment, the system crashes. Mike's assistant quickly finds an eye intern named Ed Porter, and the young guy efficiently fixes all the errors. Thanks to him, the presentation is a success. An excited Mike stays late at the office. In the evening, he meets Ed in the corridor, the same IT guy who saved his presentation. In a moment of gratitude, Mike promises to promote the guy and even invites him over to his house on the weekend. Little does he know how much he will regret this sudden impulse. Over the weekend, Ed comes to visit the boss. He acts very friendly, as if he really wants to be friends with Mike. The boss invites Ed to sit in his car, and he updates Mike's GPS system to the military version. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Should we be doing this? Uh, no. But Mike is willing to take the risk. Back at the boss's house, Ed sets up the Wi-Fi and checks other systems for malfunctions. He notices that there are many cameras in Mike's house, and all of them are disabled. This way, Mike protects his privacy. Ed jokes that no one is immune to having their data end up on the internet. Well, I'll hold on to it for as long as I can. All right, good luck with that. Mike has no idea what horrors lurk behind Ed's words. After that, the young Ed genius looks at a photo of Caitlin and lustfully watches her sunbathing in the yard. In the evening, Mike asks Ed to stay and chat with him in the gazebo. Ed tells Mike that he worked for the government for several years and even shows his photo in Kandahar. Mike is impressed and asks why Ed left the service. You see things and I don't like talking about it. It's crazy what they do. Mike respects the guy even more and promises him great prospects in the company. Later in the evening, Ed goes to a bar and stares at a waitress, but he's too afraid to approach her, so he secretly takes a photo of her on his phone. Do you find it easy to meet new people in public places? At home, Ed looks and behaves completely differently. On huge monitors, he shamelessly examines photos of different girls from every angle. Then he finds Caitlin on social media and sends her a friend request. Caitlin is unsure whether she wants to accept the request. A few days later, Mike's family gathers at home with their friends. Caitlin is bored sitting with the adults, so she adds Ed as a friend out of boredom. Little does she know she's getting herself into great danger. In their conversation, Caitlin jokingly asks Ed to save her from the boredom. Ed takes her request too literally and shows up at Mike's house with a bottle of wine. Mike is not happy to see him today and politely asks him to leave. I should probably get going. Have a good night. 
Ed is very upset by this incident since he believed he and Mike had become friends. On his way home, he can barely contain his frustration. Once he's home, Ed obsessively looks at all the photos of Mike's family. Nobody can imagine what this seemingly modest guy is planning. Rage builds up inside Ed because Mike rejected him, and he decides to find a way into the boss's house at any cost. While Ed was at Mike's place, he collected all the necessary data to remotely activate the surveillance cameras. Now he's spying on what's going on at their house. The next day, Ed shows up at a baseball game where Caitlin is playing. Nobody invited him, and Mike and his wife are surprised to see him. After the game, Ed plans to go to dinner with the family, but for Mike, that's already too much. This is a kind of family thing, you know what I mean? Sunday, dinner, that kind of thing. Caitlin, a teenager, develops an interest in Ed as she seeks to defy her parents. Her parents are against Caitlin's choice as she's only 17, and Ed is 28. In the end, a disappointed Ed remains alone. In the evening, while Caitlin takes a shower, she brings her tablet with her. She has no idea that Ed has activated its camera and is secretly spying on her. Caitlin engages in self-pleasure, all under Ed's watchful eye. The next day, Rose is nervous before her mammogram. She needs regular checkups because she has a predisposition to breast cancer. Mike calms his wife down, and she hopes for the best. When Caitlin finishes her lessons, Ed shows up at her school and offers to give her a ride. Caitlin has a boyfriend who is her classmate, but she ditches him to go for a ride with Ed. In the car, Ed makes dirty insinuations about getting close to her. Your dad would kill me. Amidst their conversation, the guys arrive at Caitlin's house and continue talking in the backyard. Mike notices them, grabs Ed, and kicks him out of the house. He's so angry that he even fires the IT guy, wanting him to stay away from his daughter. Ed was sure they were friends with Mike, so he's deeply hurt. Back at home, Ed falls into a state of madness. Now his true psychopathic nature begins to manifest fully. He's burning with a thirst for revenge and finds information about the members of the commission reviewing Mike's company documents. Ed leaks secret data about bribery and manipulations causing the commission to stop working with Mike. His company faces huge troubles. Mike senses that someone is interfering. At night, while Mike and his family are asleep, the house suddenly comes alive. Doors open and close on their own. Lights flicker, water runs, and loud music plays. The family is horrified by what's happening. Mike tries to disable the system, and eventually, the house calms down. It's Ed's doing, of course. He continues to secretly eavesdrop and taunts Mike's family, but Ed is not satisfied yet. He finds information about Rose's mammalogist and seems to have something in mind. In the morning, Mike receives a call from work with dreadful news. We've been hacked. It looks bad. We have software glitches across every single aircraft. The company faces enormous losses, and on top of that, the culprit sent offensive emails to all clients, posing as the company. Mike is 100% sure it's Ed's doing. The company's employees promise to resolve everything, but Mike no longer feels safe. At the same time, Rose receives a message from her doctor saying she has breast cancer. Rose is in complete shock and asks the doctor to call her back. During dinner at home, Mike asks the family not to use any gadgets but doesn't explain why. Caitlin is upset, and Rose is lost in her thoughts. Finally, the doctor calls her back, and it turns out he didn't send the message, and her test results are fine. Negative, you sure? Yes, negative. Please don't worry, you're perfectly fine. Rose calms down and suspects that this prank is Ed's doing. Mike thinks the same and decides to confront the troublemaker. Mike ambushes Ed on the street near his house and aggressively pins him against the wall. Through force and threats, Mike tries to make Ed stop harming his family, but Ed is not easily intimidated. He's used to threats and taunts. He makes it clear that he won't back down. Mike, I've got your whole operation strung up like a minefield. Mike vents his anger on Ed and leaves. The next day, Ed posts a video on social media showing Caitlin engaging in self-satisfaction in the shower. Her classmates laugh at her, and she's horrified. Mike and his wife rush to the school to pick up Caitlin, without fully understanding the situation. Mike assumes that Caitlin recorded the video herself and sent it to someone among her friends, and it then spread across the internet. Caitlin gets angry and runs away from her father. Now Mike realizes the truth and drives to confront Ed again. Ed is watching Mike and calls him directly in the car. Ed laughs hysterically and claims that it's all deception. Then he shows Mike the video of Caitlin. Mike loses control and yells at Ed. In the meantime, Ed disables the brake system in Mike's car, and Mike crashes into a truck at speed. Luckily, Mike is only left with minor injuries. Mike goes to the police and files a report against Ed. However, the officers don't believe him. He tried to kill me! 
You have any evidence that he's actually done any of these things? Mike has no evidence and leaves the police station empty-handed. He's almost desperate, but his wife encourages him to keep fighting. At night, Mike contacts a secret agency that deals with E-related problems. He tells them about this situation, and they promise to help. Early in the morning, Mike meets Henrik, a professional in these matters. Before entering Mike's smart home, Henrik puts on a balaclava so that Ed won't recognize him on the cameras. Henrik calls the house a beautiful prison and an excellent broadcasting station. Then he starts doing his job. How do we start? We make the house dumb. Henrik removes all information about Mike's family from the network. He also tears out all surveillance and listening devices from the house walls. By evening, the smart home is left without electricity and smart gadgets. Mike has no regrets because he cares about his family, not the conveniences of civilization. Meanwhile, Henrik finds information about Ed Porter. His real name is Richard Edward Portman. Ed grew up in a troubled family and suffered many psychological traumas in his childhood. He has serious mental health issues, broad spectrum. It's also revealed that Ed never worked for the government and has never been to Kandahar. He never stayed in any company for more than two months because he was constantly spying on his colleagues. Henrik discovers that Ed stores the information not in the cloud, but on a portable device. This means someone needs to break into his house and steal the flash drives. The information on them will serve as evidence against Ed for the police. Mike decides to break into Ed's house himself and Henrik agrees to help him. The friends find the waitress that Ed secretly photographed and steal her phone. Henrik finds Ed on social media and invites him on a date on behalf of the waitress. Ed immediately rushes to the bar. At the same time, Henrik disables the alarm in his apartment, allowing Mike to sneak in. And remember, Mr. Regan, be careful. Mike is freaking out, but he follows Henrik's advice and does everything right. Meanwhile, Henrik comes to the bar and plans to keep an eye on Ed. In Ed's apartment, Mike sets up a hidden camera and finds the first flash drive inside a toy from the constructor. Ed rushes to the bar and tries to talk to the waitress, but she has no idea what's going on and is trying to find her phone. Ed realizes that someone is playing with him and intentionally luring him out of the house. While Mike retrieves the rest of the flash drives, Henrik warns that they need to leave the apartment urgently because Ed figured it out and is heading back home. Mike doesn't manage to leave the apartment in time. Ed grabs a gun from the hallway and heads towards him. Mike freezes in place, and Henrik sends a fake signal to the police about gunshots in Ed's apartment and an injured officer. Following Henrik's advice, Mike miraculously manages to avoid danger. He escapes the building using the fire escape and quickly runs to Henrik. Meanwhile, Ed is caught by the arriving police officers. After a brief lecture, they take his gun and let him go. Left alone in the apartment, Ed realizes that Mike stole his flash drives, so he calls the police and falsely claims that Mike robbed and assaulted him. I don't know if he's still here. I'm hurt pretty bad. Can you please come? Then, the liar Ed gathers all his courage and deliberately inflicts a severe wound on himself against the sink. Meanwhile, Mike settles the score with Henrik and thanks him for the help. He goes to the police station and shows them the stolen flash drives. But thanks to Ed's testimony, the police have their own version of events. They accuse Mike of theft with hacking and assaulting Ed. They handcuff him and take him to a cell. You understand any of these that's him right there. Right there, that's him. You motherfucker! Hey, hey. I see you, Porter! In the cell, Mike feels completely hopeless and doesn't know how to save his family. Ed is about to be released, but before that, he asks the police to return the flash drives. The policeman casually informs him that they will be sent for examination first. For Ed, it's a death sentence, as all the evidence against him is on those flash drives. So, he takes the gun and quickly disappears. Soon, they release Mike on bail. He comes home and senses that something is off. In the kitchen, Mike sees signs of a struggle and arms himself with a knife. It turns out that Ed arrived at his house before him. He tied up Caitlin and Rose and is keeping them at gunpoint. Ed makes Mike drop the knife and sit next to his family. The psychopath taunts the hostages and threatens them. Mike watches in agony but can't do anything. I'm not scared of you anymore, Mike. I don't like you anymore, Mike. Crazy Ed plays around with the gun, pointing it at each hostage in turn. He even puts the gun in his own mouth. At that moment, Mike jumps on Ed and knocks him down. A fight breaks out between the men and the gun flies to the side. When Ed gains the upper hand, Rose trips him up out of nowhere. He gets angry and wants to punish the woman, but Mike throws Ed's head forcefully onto the step. Mike wants to vent all this painting on this scumbag. 
He grabs the gun and aims it at Ed's chest, but Rose removes the tape from her mouth and pleads with her husband not to do it. Hearing his wife's request, Mike refrains from committing the crime. Soon, the police arrive. After some time, Mike returns to work and celebrates the successful launch of the app with the team. His house is being repaired, and the family continues to live in peace and tranquility. Have you ever worked with mentally unstable people? Tell us about this in the comments. We will feature the most interesting responses in the next video. And here is the best comment from the previous video. See you soon.